Hello and welcome to Money Nine English's latest show, Company Nama, where we give you all the big updates of the week from the corporate and startup world. I'm Sreesh Tiwari. Over to the news from the corporate world. The Mumbai bench of National Company Law Tribunal (NCLT) on 19 July ordered bankruptcy proceedings against debt-ridden Future Retail Limited and named an interim resolution professional by the Kishore Biyani-led company. Amazon India, long stuck in the legal battle with Reliance and Future, had filed an intervention request to halt the insolvency proceedings. Amazon is expected to challenge the order in the National Co- Company Law Appellate Tribunal. Future Retail owes more than 15,000 crore rupees to its creditors, led by Bank of India, which alone has dues of 856.10 crore rupees. The Future Retail Limited investors have been crying foul and have written to the government and the markets regulator opposing the rebranding of former Big Bazaar stores to Smart Bazaar by Reliance Retail. Hindustan Unilever, India's largest fast-moving consumer goods company, on July 19th reported a 13.85% year-on-year rise in consolidated net profit at 2,391 rupees crore for the quarter ended June, which was above analyst estimate of around rupees 2,191.3 crore rupees. Standalone net profit was at 2,289 crore rupees, up by 11% year-on-year. The company's revenue from operations rose 19. 0.46% year on year to rupees 14331 crore for the reported quarter which was also above analyst expectations of rupees 13438.5 crore the company said the underlying volume growth of 6% Tata Steel has planned capital expenditure of 12000 crore rupees in its India and Europe operations during the current financial year the company's chief executive officer TV Narendran has said the domestic steel major plans to invest around 8500 crore rupees in India and 3500 crore rupees on the company's operations in Europe Narendra who is also the managing director of Tata Steel has said The government promoted National Asset Reconstruction Company has offered to acquire 17 accounts of distressed companies including five future group companies and two SREI accounts from lenders sources have said the ARC a week ago circulated a list among lenders of 17 companies with total outstanding loans of 93240 crore rupees As the race for 5G spectrum auction heats up, billionaire Mukesh Ambani's Reliance Jio has made a 14000 crore rupees earnest money deposit while rival Bharti Airtel has made a deposit of 5500 crore rupees. Adani Group has made a modest 100 crore deposit while indicating that there will be no cutthroat bidding war between Ambani and Adani. Earnest money deposit is reflective of the quantity of airwaves a company can bid for in in the auction. Grasim Industries and Aditya Birla Group company announced the launch of a new B2B commerce platform for building materials. The company will invest 2000 crores over the next 5 years it said in a regulatory filing. Group chairman Kumar Mangalam Birla has said that with this foray Grasim would be able to leverage the large B2B ecosystem within the Aditya Birla Group. This move was also to catalyze the growth of MSME universe in India and provide an impetus to the government's vision of digital India. Bas ek call kar sakti hai aapko kangal. Khali ho sakta hai bank khata. Kaise? देखिए मेरे साथ जागते रहो सिर्फ मनी नाइन पर अभी डाउनलोड करें and prashant jain has quit as the chief investment officer of hdfc mutual funds on friday earlier jain had become the first fund manager in india to oversee over 1 lakh crore rupees equity assets jain managed balanced advantage flexi cap and top 100 funds at hdfc mutual funds while there are other fund managers in charge of over 1 lakh crore rupees aum like sbi and icici industry data has shown that the substantial part of those assets are in debt instruments jain also had the unique distinction of being the first indian fund manager to manage a fund for over 25 years Imami Agrotech the branded food manufacturing arm of Imami Group has announced its foray into the 30000 crore rupees branded powdered spices market with Mantra Spices under its Imami healthy and tasty brand The company hopes to achieve a revenue of 700 to 1000 crore rupees over the next 5 years. The firm plans to tap 2 lakh outlets by this year end and 5 lakh in the next 3 years. 
To expedite the sale process of a bankrupt Reliance Capital, its lenders have decided to hive off Reliance Commercial Finance and Reliance Home Finance into a trust for a separate resolution process. The proceeds from the sale of these two uh, carved up companies will flow directly to the lenders of RCAP, currently undergoing an insolvency resolution. In more news, a Piramil Group led consortium, Indus in International, Oak Tree Capital, and Cosme Financial are among resolutions applicants actively considering a bid for Reliance Capital as an entire company. A special CBI court on Tuesday rejected the bail pleas of all five people arrested in a case where Bangalore-based Biocon Biologics is accused of bribing government officials dealing in a product approval. The CBI last month arrested Central Duck Drugs Standard Control Organization Joint Drug Controller S. Ishwara Reddy and Biocon Biologics Head of National Regulatory Affairs L. Praveen Kumar among the five accused in the case. Currently, they are in judicial custody. Well, moving on from the corporate world, let's take a quick trip to the startup world. Blinkit is expected to shut most of its own back-end fulfillment warehouses and merge them with Zomato's business-to-business -business restaurant supply business Hyperpure. Earlier in March, the company had halted its business and closed many dark stores only to open new ones so that it could keep its 10-minute delivery promise. The move was seen as an attempt to compete better against the Mumbai-based Zepto, which at the moment was aggressively promoting 10-minute delivery. Indian drug and medical services startup PharmEasy is in talks with investors to raise $200 million but at a valuation that could be 15% or even 25% lower than last year's $5.1 billion according to a Reuters report. Signal signaling growth stress in India's startup ecosystem, one source has said that PharmEasy backed by big name investors such as Process, TPG and Temasek is in talks to secure the new funds at a valuation as much as 15% below than last year. And venture capital firm Sequa Capital and Tiger Global led funding in Indian startups during April June, with the fintech sector attracting most of the 6 billion US dollars, which is almost above 47,870 crore rupees investments. Out of the total, Tiger Global's total investments 40% were in the fintech sector and 20% in the enterprise technology. Sequa Enterprise Technology accounted for about 25% of the funding and 20% in fintech. Around 60% of the investments by Tiger Global and Sequa were made in the growth of startups. Alright, these were all the big stories from the corporate and startup world. Hope you liked this episode of Company Nama and you got your weekly dose of news. That's all for today. See you again next week with new updates from corporate and startup world. Until then, keep watching Money Night.